Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Presented by Carolina Lake Lake Tom Gibson. When the action begins in the studio, our referees for tonight's event are Elgato Azul and Carolina Real Streamers. For the viewers in attendance and Facebook and YouTube users around the world, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the Elgato Azul TV studio in Louisville, Texas, it's time! What's up, slime lovers? I'm your host, Chris, a.k.a. El Gato Azul. It's my boy over here, Mr. Jamie Dunn, Carolina Lakeweights. How's it going, everybody? And uh, welcome to the slime show, baby! Heck yeah! So, tonight we're going to be talking about the spawn. Uh and how it's different from every other fish, pretty much, that's in the lake. Uh, you know, it seems like every time about this time of year, all everybody's getting fired up about these sand bass spawning, and they want to go catch sand bass. And then, you know, April, it's the dogwood start blooming, and guys are talking about crappie, and they're spawning, and it's time to go catch crappie. You just go fill the fill your cooler with crappie. And, you know, when I was a kid, same thing with the bass. About the time those dogwoods are blooming, you're throwing bass up in the shallows. You're catching one almost every other cast. Uh, and, uh-oh, I hear my boy's in trouble. <laughs> I hear mom's on his ass. <laughs> Not <So>, Jackson. <laughs> that, you know, that differs greatly with 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 catfish so uh, anybody who's been catfished a long time knows when the spawn is on they are virtually impossible to catch uh we'll kind of discuss some of that uh why why that occurs this time of year but uh before we get into that jamie how's it going buddy doing good man um guys we want to let everybody know uh Three years is coming up for CLW. Every day we're doing some sales. So every day, look on the Carolina Lake Wakes for posts. Uh, we're putting up I'll be right stuff. back. All right, bro. We're putting up sales every day. So right now, you can um, get you some merchandise. It's going on sale every day, different items. All apparel. It's still on sale for 34% off. Use the code SHIRTS. Um, of course, you can always go and, uh, like I said, watch Facebook because we're putting up lots of good sales every day. Guys, we got a lot of exciting things coming to CLW. This weekend, we are releasing the version 2.0, version 2 of the Jesse James Outlaw Rig. So look for that. That will be happening one day this week. Um, so lots of cool stuff, guys. Just uh, like I said, uh, watch Facebook. You can see uh, all the stuff that we're going through and um, putting up every day, putting up on sale. Yep. CLW has been in business for almost three years, guys. And we thank each and every one of you for making it happen. And I can promise you we're getting ready to grow even more. Lots, like I said, lots of exciting stuff, man. And um, we can't wait to be able to share everything with you guys. Uh, we're going to be hitting the road again in December, late December, early January. We're going to be hitting a lot of shows next year. So we're coming to a town near you. Um so we can't wait until we can get back up on the road again. But till then, we got a lot of work to do. And um, it's, it's happening, guys. And I know tonight we're going to have a great show. We're going to talk about the spawn. We're going to open it up where you guys can also ask us questions. 
So anything you want to know, I'm going to be watching chat tonight. And we're going to be answering some questions from chat. So if y'all guys have anything, definitely let us know. What's up, everybody in chat? I see we got Operation Vets with Net. Welcome in. Jeff Martin, welcome in, my friend. Good to have you. Eagle Eyes, how you doing, my friend? We got a good crowd up in here tonight. Oh, man. Paul, what's up? <laughs> Everybody in chat, man. So, what's yeah. up, people? My boy's out there. I heard my wife ripping into him. He's out in the barn taking all the Halloween decorations out. He's starting early, man. He's ready for that candy. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, man. So have you gone through and see who's in here yet? I was going through the list. I uh, started with, we had Operation Vets with Nets, Jeff Martin, Certified Fishing Nut. And uh, let you take back over from there, brother. All right. Let's see here. We got uh, Jeff Lowry. Welcome in, Jeff. How you doing, buddy? We got Eagle Eyes Tienda. That's our Operation Vets with Nets Texas captain or team captain. Uh, let's see. That's Rich, Operation Vets with Nets. We got the shitty fisherman. That's gas money. He came on the boat two weeks ago with a on an Operation Vets with Nets mission. Got them a couple of PBs. Burned some memories into the Medulla Oblongata. <laughs> that was a great trip. Paul Story, welcome in, Paul. How's it going, buddy? Yes. We got Banking Cats. Welcome in, bro. So, whew, I got my heart going, man. <laughs> I'm going to deal with that kid. Yeah, we went over and told everybody, man, about CLW, all the cool sales we're having every day. So we got it out there, brother. Everybody, like I told them, just watch the Facebook group page. Watch Facebook for all cool stuff. So lots of going on. Yeah, it seemed like y'all got a big sale every day. So that's it, man. I'm giving back. Some. Load up. Next week's show, we're going to have... Uh, we're going to do it on Monday next week because our guests, that's the only day they can do it. We're going to have Stacy Gaston and, and uh, Peter Drees from SmackDown Catfishing. That should be an awesome show. So make sure y'all tune in. It's going to be it's going to be Monday instead of Wednesday next week. Uh, plus, Jamie, you're going to be on the road Wednesday. Yeah, we're going to be we're going to be going down to probably Cooper River prepping for a tournament coming up uh here real soon so we're gonna be down there uh one day or two days next week getting ready for that can't wait juan says he got his hoodie and his gear in this past weekend thanks for the awesome stuff heck yeah Uh, I'm not sure what that means, Banking Cats. If that's the case, I must know, is the bird indeed the word? Can someone decipher that for me? <laughs> <laughs> I got a hummingbird. It tells me what the word is, whether I'm in the right area or not. <laughs> Donate life catfishing. That's Terry Woodrow. What's up, Terry? Y'all don't know Terry. He's one of our team members at Carolina Lake Weights. He's yes. got Donate Life uh, Catfishing, raising awareness for organ donors. Go check him out on Facebook. And my man has been catching some nice flatheads too, man. And we ought to get him on. Yes. Trying to get Ben Fitzgerald. He owns Knickknacks Bait Boards. They're his flatheads are about to fire up and then trying to get Colton Howell on, but man, he's hard to freaking nail down. <laughs> Richard, what's up, buddy? Billy, what's up, bro? How you doing, man? Bradley Hopkins, welcome in. 
Yeah, Billy was on the show last night on TikTok. We were having a good time over there. Billy, appreciate you uh, checking us out over there and uh, chatting with us, brother. Got Greg Mays in the house. Welcome in, Greg. We're going to get Greg on the show. Uh, probably not this week, but next. I think we'll probably get Greg on if he's available. We'll hear his story. Uh, gas money says, when are, when are we getting more slime show hats in stock? Brother, we're making them up as quick as we can. As soon as we put them bad boys on the uh, website, they are rolling out, man. We just, uh, we just went back out of stock. I had some more on there this week and they are gone again. So we've got some more on the order and they will be coming very soon. So keep an eye on the uh, website. They look good, man. Coastal yeah, Waters, do. welcome in. What's Cookies up, Outdoors, that's Alex Doty. Welcome in, buddy. Yep. Greg says, we way down yonder on the Chattahoochee. <laughs> <laughs> it gets hotter than Hoochie Coochie. It's about that time for the spawn, so it's not quite here yet. Water temps are low 60s here, but... That's when fish begin their migration um, and start maybe not looking for spawning ground just yet, but they just start moving up into closer to where it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to go into a little bit. I'm a lake guy, so I know lakes and how to target them in a lake. Jamie knows rivers. So, you know, in a lake, when you're talking about pre-spawn, uh, it's all about weather patterns and warming conditions going to move them shallow and rain is going to move them up around the creek mouths and, and river mouths. Uh, if you're going to be targeting them, you're going to be looking for them right now in a staging area somewhere near spawning habitat. So uh, mouths to creeks, maybe not right at the mouth unless it's been raining. If it's been raining, get right up there by the mouth and, uh, that's where you're going to see large concentrations of big fish. Yeah. Uh, smaller fish, they stay all over the lake. Uh, but the big ones, they look for the prime spawning habitat. And that generally happens on most of our lakes. It's going to be on the north end where the water's coming in. That warms up faster. Uh, spawning temperatures usually starts low 70s peaks around 82 degrees something like that so um, you you know most i know a lot of places have a thread fin spawn and i would say thread fins start spawning right around 70 degrees um, and right when that thread sp fin spawn is over I, I believe that's pretty much when a lot of these bigger fish decide it's time to leave and go do their thing. So uh, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there quick. And we got 80 degree temps at the end of end of the week here. So that that's us, Chris. I believe next week we're gonna have some 80s, 81. So I'm looking for that to kick in real soon here for the spawn to kick in, probably around May, somewhere up in that area. So it won't be long, man. The way things are going. Yeah, it doesn't all happen at the same time. Like I said, the bigger the bigger fish are going to start uh, looking first. They look for the best places. Uh, generally, a lot of them are going to be, they spawn in, you know, basically about six to 12 foot of water for blue cats. Uh, you know, they like undercut banks, uh, rocky, you know, boulders and stuff they get under. They like root balls, uh, washouts under root balls, laydowns on trees, uh, anywhere where they can get inside and protect those eggs and uh, away from flow. They don't really like too much current. So if you're going up into a river, you're actually probably looking for something that's backwater, that's out of the current. It's just got very little to no flow. Uh and then this time of year, I'm looking to catch them as they're heading for that area. Uh, you know, I know where they're 
looking to go and I'm going to go into that little bottleneck hoping they're coming through there. So Chris, I've got underwater I've got, caves. Yes. Underwater caves. They will make a cave underneath yeah. a boulder underneath a, a root root ball. Uh, you know, a, a, an old boat that's sunk, you know, an old car that's in the lake. Those are great spots for, for spawning habitat. Uh, you know, guys that noodle, they'll put down big jugs and, and giant like milk jugs or butter churners. Uh, they'll put down barrels and and pull them out of those barrels. So, yeah. Chris, I've got a good question already from chat, brother. Spawn or not, do we change up our rigs or do we stay the, cha the same? I'd say this time of year, I start downsizing my baits. My rigs are fair. Depends on what fishery I'm fishing because uh, a lot of the biggest fish in these lakes are caught this time of year. Uh, and I know the reason being is because guys that know how to catch them know what area they're going to be coming through. So you just got to, if you're there at the, on the right day, there's going to be some of the biggest fish in the lake coming through those areas. Uh, that's why a lot of times the, the lake record or whatnot will be caught pre-spawn, even though that fish may have been heavier a month and a half or two months ago uh, in the winter feed up. It's just, they're not, they're more spread out and, uh, so you'll see some of the biggest fish in the lake being caught now, in April. Late, now let me, late let me March, ask you this, Chris. March through April. When you move up to shallower water, do you change up the lengths on your rigs and stuff, or do you keep them about the same? I start going shorter on my lengths. Uh, and, you know, if I'm dragging shallow, I'll even put some suspended where I got – they're up on, closer to the surface. Yeah. Uh, they don't just feed on the, they're not bottom feeders by any means. I mean, when you're up shallow, you can see them on the surface. And a lot of times I'll see them like breach the surface up shallow chasing, you know, sand bass. You know, right now they're following sand bass up into the creeks. I got a buddy that fished today. He's like, man, we fished around these giant, piles of sand bass the sand bass his backs were just out of the water he's like we caught five good fish right around those sand bass so those are not spawning fish they're in there chasing the sand bass so i know here we start hitting a lot of what we call the duck grass you know fishing close to that duck grass and stuff in shallow water and uh, that normally pays off pretty well for us here when everything starts happening yeah that's Similar to our patterns, um, sh that shallow flooded grass, uh, you know, a lot of it, if it's green, that's good. There's, there's, I think, you know, the lake rises this time of year and there's a lot of stuff up in that debris and sticks. And, uh, and then if it rains, you know, we move up, I move up right where the flow's coming in. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of times those f bigger fish will become scavengers after big rain events. There's all types of crap getting washed into the lake, dead birds, dead rats, uh, you know, frogs and just all kinds of crap flowing into the lake. And they'll just eat all that junk uh, as they get ready to go do their spawn. So this time of year, they will, this is the time of year I downsize a lot. Yeah. Cause yeah. They're in there eating little bitty sh threadfin shad, uh, you know, worm, even like a worm. You know, I guys that are fishing shallow, fishing with worms will catch big fish off a of worm this time yeah. of year. So yeah. They won't do that in the winter, but this time of year, they, they get up in that shallow stuff and they eat everything. Yeah, and, and just like I see in the chat right here, if you're sitting there, you're dragging in two to three foot of water, of course, you know, you're going to you're gonna downsize your leaders. You're going to go shorter because if you stay long, your baits is going to be up on top of the water. So definitely, yeah, Um, I myself, we love, you know, you start dragging that shallow water starting right now, really. 
ourselves. Because, yeah. uh, like I said, if I see the duck grass with the high water, I'm going to hit it. Because, like you talking about the rain flow, you know, that swamp water is coming out. And as that flushes out the swamps, you know, that shallow water, they're going to be right there, right on the edge of that, getting that, you know, that bait that's coming out of there. They're feeding up. Yeah, you get up in that muddy, nasty water where there's crap floating on the surface. That's where you're going to catch yeah. your best fish. So I know a lot of you guys that have, are on Facebook, you'll see these guys that have been catching these giants lately. And you can see there's literally crap floating on the surface of the water when they're reeling these fish in. They're right up in there where that flow's coming into the lake. They're not in the flow. They're in that washout where everything's just dumping into the lake and spewing that all kinds of just junk up in yeah. the area. Uh, yeah. Because I can, I can tell you right now they have moved up to that area, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're feeding up. They're trying to get – trying to get their food, man. I mean, it won't be long. They know what's getting ready to happen. The, the moon, you know, right now, I think we're on a uh, decreasing moon right now. So yeah. they're definitely feeding up for sure. Now, I still go big on some yeah. baits. It's, yeah. If I'm on a big fish fishery, I'm still going big on baits. I know they're not – a big fish is still looking for something pretty good up there. Uh, you know, fish are – are starting to transition towards their spawning habitat. So, you know, right now we're having big sand bass runs and every time you get a rain, a big group of them will go. Yeah. And so getting up in there with, you know, a bait that's that big, uh, you know, you're matching the bait with what's coming through there. And, uh, you know, if it's a thread fin spawn, you know, you might be using a two inch bait. That's it. So, uh, you know, I kind of, I do mix it up this time of year, especially when I'm fishing that muddy water. I got some really small stuff on. Uh, and it, just from day to day, you don't know what they're going to want. So just give them the, give them a little variety. Yeah. Cause uh, if y'all guys were, uh, the other day, me and Rebecca, we were doing live on TikTok. We were using whole shad heads. I'm talking about big, fresh yeah. shad heads. It was just caught out the nets. We got the fresh bait right out from a fisherman down there that was checking his nets, and we were using big chunks. Yeah. And uh, we, we caught four fish, you know, in the 20s with big hand size baits. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I it, even though you can catch them on the small baits this time of year, the majority of the my biggest fish that have come in March and April still mm -hmm. want a massive bait. So yeah. uh, just depending on what fishery I'm on, I'm going to be on Texoma this weekend. You can bet I'm going big. I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm up there looking for 70 plus pound fish this time of year. And uh, most of the fish I've caught that are in the 70, 80 pound class come off a giant bait yeah. whole. So and guys, also let everybody know if you have any questions. Also tonight, feel free. Uh, I'm gonna be watching chat, and uh, we're gonna be trying to answer some questions. So let us definitely know, guys, whatever you're thinking about, you're wondering about. Let us know. Jello chicken. So <laughs> go for it, man. Whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna be using. Big fresh bait caught that day. And I'll use some smaller ones too, just to, to make sure uh, it's not one of those days they want something small. I think this weekend it's going to be a big bait, big fish weekend, but you never know till you go. That's it. Chris, here's a question for you. Where are you getting your bait on Lake Texoma? Uh, about a hundred miles south of there in Lake Louisville. <laughs> I bring my bait with me when I travel fish. I don't ever travel fish without bait. It's, uh, Texoma, you know, it's one of the best lakes in the, in Texas, but it's also probably the hardest lake in Texas. 
And when you can't find bait on that lake, you might spend half your whole day just trying to acquire bait. So I bring it with me. Uh, and I do that. It doesn't matter where I'm fishing. I'm bringing my bait with me because I like to just roll up and go fish. Uh, I don't want to have to go looking for bait. And some lakes are sm a smaller lake. I might be more inclined to try to do that because I can, you know, there's nowhere for fish to hide. Lake Texoma is 95,000 acres. Uh, it's 50 miles long. You can't run all over that lake looking for bait. And uh, so bringing it to that lake for me is, is crucial. If I don't, if I'm not getting it, my guide buddy gets it for me the day before. So I got a couple of guide buddies up there and, you know, it pays to have good friends. So I always say for, if you're a travel fisherman, be friendly, man, to, to really high level guys that are on the water a lot. Uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Mosley's one of my good buddies right there. He's on it right now. He's get, he's out there getting bait, uh, for, for our Saturday trip. So, I got another guide buddy. If it falls through and Matt's not able to get it, then I got another guide buddy that's going to get it for me. And uh, if I have to go get it, I'll go to Louisville. I got mine last time on Louisville. It was uh, in 37 feet, which is surprising. But if you got to get it, go look on ledges. Look at the bottom of ledges. Uh, it could be in right now. Uh, big baits on that lake, they could be in 15 feet. They could be in 50 feet. Uh, they're generally, you can find it in that lake on the ledges. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, uh, but certain days, uh, <laughs> yeah, that lake will kick your ass. Bill says, tough getting bait from the yak. Yep. I get that. So, so Juan, if you want to go hit Texoma, uh, you're welcome to jump on with me, buddy. Uh, I could probably save you a heartbreak because that lake's going to kick your ass if you're not used to fishing it. As soon as you get on it, you're going to be like, holy crap, this thing's big. Uh, it's just it'll overwhelm even really good anglers. Uh, I've been beat on that lake so many times, but I've got good buddies that fish it constantly. And I've learned from them over the years. It, you got to throw everything, you know, out the window when you go up there, one, it is not like any of any of the, our other lakes. Uh, it's very striper oriented. So you think you're going to be in two feet on your home lake? Texoma, you may be in 60 feet on the same day we are fishing two feet on every other lake. It's just weird. Sounds like a character in this truth. Man, I I it's uh it'll make you pull your hair out. Uh, I've left that lake so many times going thinking, what the F just happened? Uh, it's only the last four or five years. And I consider myself to be a pretty good angler. It's only been in the last four or five years. I've been fishing it for 20 something years. It's only been in probably the last four years where I'm now feeling like, all right, now I know what I'm doing on this lake. Uh, just a, a total ass whipping. Hey, it's one of my high school buddies right there. <laughs> Welcome in, Corey. You're welcome to jump on anytime, man. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, and uh, I'll get you my my cell number. Uh, you're welcome to join me anytime, man. Paul Story says, <laughs> "I need that bait catching lesson." <laughs> Matt says he's in 58 feet right now. Wow, I believe it. I know when I was in five feet last week catching, you know, we didn't do great. We got to, I mean, I'm not, 
We did okay. We got a 40 and a 35, but we only caught five fish the whole day. My other buddy, my other guide buddy fished the other end of the lake out in 70 feet and he got a, a 72 and a couple 30s and I'm like, damn, that's <laughs> 70 feet. I'm up shallow right now, you know. Um, but, but. JTC, what's up, buddy? I love the, the two walks, man. I love it. <laughs> Killer B says Tex Ocean, and that is no crap. That lake gets like an ocean. Paul, bait catching lesson. <laughs> this time of year, bait can be tough. But just get out there and grind. If you're looking for bigger bait, get on the ledges. Uh, big fish generally like to orient to ledges. Uh, they may not be there all the time, but there are some big fish usually on the ledges. Find a windblown ledge, uh, maybe a little pocket that's on that ledge. So when I say a pocket, you got a shoreline contour. Well, the pocket's going to be a little bend in that ledge. Go right there to that little pocket. That's going to be a sweet spot where you'll pull big baits out. And it may not be that first one, but you go on a shoreline that may have a few of those little pockets with some wind blowing on it. And those are great places to get big bait. It, it you know, it could be in 20 feet. It could be in 35 feet uh, from any given day. So you just got to be ready to uh, go looking, you know. Rich, uh, yeah, if you're pulling them out of deep water, brother, pull them out real slow. I uh, don't know if a lot of people knows. If you pull your uh, bait out of uh, deep, deep water real fast, they will belly up on you. But definitely, man, pull them up real slow. That's what I've uh, found out that works real well. Yeah, a lot of uh, – just depends on what type of fish you're pulling up. Yeah. Some of them are more uh, – weaker than others uh, gizzard shad you can pull them up pretty deep they don't really die thread fin die pretty easy yeah uh perch is the same way they uh they'll they'll belly up on you quick out of deep water yeah uh won't go into all the bait but <laughs> drum you can't hardly keep them alive no matter what you do uh but <laughs> Really, I'm fishing dead bait this time of year. I don't even try to keep them alive unless uh, I get a bunch of really big ones. I'll keep them alive. That way, at the end of the day, I can release them. Uh, but yeah, I generally know how much I'm going to need for the day, and I don't. And I don't keep more than I need. I, 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 that's one thing I'd like to probably stress to you guys: is don't take more than you need. You're, it's stressful on, on a on a fishery if you're over if you're just over harvesting the big baits um so over yeah, time you kind of know what you're going to need for the day don't take more than what you need take maybe just a little bit more than what you need so and, and that's like if you got to see us using bluegill uh you'll see us every time before we leave that river we keep them alive and we return them so we we normally we, we won't take them and kill them or nothing if we're not going to use them. Yep, yeah, I agree. I see some guys just clear out a whole freaking pile yeah. and put it in their cooler. I'm like, damn, you couldn't use that much bait in 30 trips. What, I mean, why? Yeah. You know why? Just we, take what you're going to need for the day and put the rest back. That's uh, it. We normally average about 15 blue, fifteen brim. And honestly, we'll release probably seven of them by the end of the night. So, but we do keep them alive. Um, yeah, I keep my brim alive if I'm flathead yeah. fishing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I've got a question. Y'all ever target flatheads with live bait this time of year, structure, structure in shallow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Structure in shallow, creek mouths, uh, ledges leading into the creek. Yep. All good spots. Log log jams are good good areas. Uh, lay downs, root balls. Yes. All especially, especially right there at night, man. 
they're going to start livening up, so they're going to move on up the feed. I mean, hit it shallow, hit lots of structure. I've really been focusing on getting a 100-pound fish in the boat. So last three years, I've spent every trip up at Texoma this time of year. Just the only way you get one is if you go. No. Yep. Bait. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot Mike of people. Said, and, nothing wrong with having to go get more bait. That's it. Yeah, and if you got it that easy, then you should be able to go back and get it pretty easy. But just, I would say, don't take more than you need, guys. Uh, yeah. You know, if we keep snatching all the bait out sooner or later, that's on. You know, that could. You know, just like the, the brim. I mean, you could put a hurting on the population if it keeps on. Yeah, our lake's done that. I taught a lot of guys how to get bait in the last five years, and it's like I have to be hush hush on my on my bait holes now because uh, when I bring guys on the boat, I, I make sure now that I got bait before they get on because if I, sh you know, I don't mind sharing my fishing holes because fish move, but my yeah. best bait holes are actual holes where you can go to it. Uh, to get really good bait uh, most of the time. And if there's eight or 10 guys working that hole over and a couple of them been there right before I got there, then I can't get bait, uh, That's it. you know, so. So guys, if y'all give us a thumbs up, it helps. Take a Definitely. second, give us a thumbs up. Uh, Go over to Carolina Lake Weights. Give them a, a – go subscribe to Carolina Lake Weights on YouTube. Head over – if you're on Facebook, head over to Elgato Azul TV on YouTube. And give us a, uh, a follow. So, uh, Yeah, guys, we appreciate all the subscribers over on YouTube. Definitely help us grow that thing. We're going to have some new content hitting over there very soon. Corey Whaley says, if I have bait left alive, I release it or give it to my neighbors to eat. That's what I do too, Corey. I, I bring it back with me to the ramp alive. And if there's somebody there that needs it, I give it to them. Uh, and if there's not, I turn it loose. Uh, I feel good at the end of the day if I got some giant baits and I get to put them back in the lake. Water effort time. Yep, that's for that's sure. It. That's the key to, to uh, success in the fishing. Water effort time. Yeah, our friend had uh, was telling us about what that meant the other day. Yeah, Anthony Brown, that was a fun show. Yeah, it was, man. For guys that are just getting in here next week, we're going to have an early show on Monday. We're going to do it Monday. We got SmackDown catfishing. It's going to be uh, Stacy Gaston and Peter Drees from SmackDown. Uh, I think that's going to be a great show. Definitely got some big names on the show. We've had some big names on the show. We're definitely growing it, that's for sure. Lots of top-notch catfishermen. Yeah, Bill, that's a nice little trick because uh, getting big baits is not always easy. So uh, instead of just using one to get one bait, uh, there's you can usually make three baits out of one. Uh, it's uh, I take kind of the head, a big head, giant head, you know, big, big head piece. That's one bait. I fillet the side down. Uh, I use the whole fillet minus the tail. That's the second big bait. It's going to be a little bigger than my hand. Bait about like that. Big giant fillet. I double stinger hook that. I put the stinger hook in the back. One of the ten out in the nose, ten out in the back. And then I use the whole body minus the tail and I trim the fins off. So a big giant bait. I can get three baits out of it instead of one. Uh, 
on any given day, they generally like one of those three pieces. I mean, considerably more than the others. Uh, I don't know why they choose which one for that day, but uh, most of the time it's that filet. They like that filet. Some days they want to crush the head. Some days they like the body piece. But, uh, Rich, we appreciate that, buddy. We do try. Thank y'all for that. And like I said, guys, if y'all have any questions, definitely let us know in chat. We'll definitely answer them. Randall says, I know from experience, you got to protect the bait holes. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> I like helping guys, but I don't like to put myself at a disadvantage by doing it. Uh, yeah. So I, I, when I now when I teach guys bait, I teach guys how to pattern the bait and then they, you know, they got to go find it. I'm not going to give out my good bait holes. Uh, those are top secret from now on. So, yes, catfish run upstream in the rivers like striper in the springtime, um, and they stay in the rivers all years. I got a little piece, a little article I, I'll read. Uh, and we had a show on on uh, on the uh, behavior of giant catfish. Uh, I was actually surprised, Chris, when you were reading some of them articles there in that show, how much they move around. It was actually crazy hearing at the distance that they were moving. So this is one of the most extensive studies ever done on big blue catfish in the reservoir. Uh, Corey Lee, a fishery biologist on Lake Okeechobee in Florida, did his master's degree research at the University of Oklahoma at Lake Texoma on the Texas-Oklahoma border. I'll be fishing that lake this year. Uh, the first supersized blue cat come out of there in 2004. And that's pretty much what set the catfishing world on fire. Uh, 123 pounder. Before that, it was, the record was like 108 or something. So, uh, but they did, he did his master's degree study on tracking the movements of blue catfish tagged with ultrasonic transmitters. His study explained the lament among local anglers that blue catfish disappear in the summer. So you hear guys, I'll say, man, it's summertime. We ain't catching big fish. And guys will say, well, they got to eat. And, uh, you know, there's a reason why you're not catching them. It's not like they just don't eat. Uh, they disappear. They leave. So uh, Lee and his co-workers caught and tagged 30 to 70 pound blue catfish from three segments of the lake. The Red River Arm the Washita arm, and the main lake at the junction of the two arms. Long-term monitoring of the tagged fish led to surprising results. In late April and early May, most of the blue catfish from all three segments of the lake, uh, it's a 90,000-acre reservoir, began to migrate uh, and that by June, they had moved miles up into the river. Uh, it surprised them. Most tagged fish didn't stay in the lake at all in the summer. Even though there's plenty of habitat and a huge population of forage fish, they abandoned the lake during the summer and moved up into the shallow Red River. Uh, some of them moved as... Uh, a long way up river, uh, 25 miles up river within a couple of months of when, when they tagged them. He prepared the study of the movement of catfish within the lake. So the wholesale movement of all the, of all the fish up river into the relatively, relatively shallow red river made detailed monitoring of the fish difficult. Fortunately, he had positioned stationing receivers in the channel of the Red River and the Washita River to document any tagged fish moving out of the study area. Those receivers proved that Texoma giant blue catfish travel and they travel fast. Stationary receivers identify individual tagged fish and their depth as they move up and downstream. 
The receivers cycle back and forth between recordings, fish identity, and depth roughly every 15 to 20 seconds. The tagged blue cats often move past the receivers so quickly that only one of the two measurements co were uh, completed before the fish had moved out of range. So they were hauling ass. They were moving. They weren't just slowly going there. They knew where they were going, and they were getting there fast. Uh, they moved long distances, and uh, they pretty much, even the fish that were up in the Washita traveled 50 miles and moved up into the red. So uh, it puzzled them. They don't know why they did that. They think maybe it could be water chemistry, but they do that to spawn. They leave to go into their spawning habitat, and then they stay up there. Uh, generally they make it back into the lake around October when you get cold rainstorms. They ride that surge of cold water back into the lake and we start hammering big fish again. So Chris, for the ones out there, I see uh how can people go and find these articles? Uh what can they do to look them up to study even more? Can okay. you give us well, this article was done? Uh you can look this one up. Uh, under the secret lives of reservoir blue catfish uh, and it goes in it's pretty extensive i mean it's not a book but uh it pretty much tells you all everything that uh, you need to know about it um it tells you kind of where they are in the winter where they're tagging them in the winter their movements in the winter which parts of the lake they like to be on uh it's a pretty informative article, so go check that out. Uh, and, and with that information, it's going to save you a lot of time on basically finding these fish. You're going to know what to go ahead and not look for and get, know where to go ahead and basically start heading towards. So that information tells a lot. You know, definitely it's going to save you a lot of time. Yeah. Justin says, weird how one particular bait gets most bites. For me, it's the head most of the time. I've been fishing for 35 years for these damn things. They pick one piece of the bait generally for that day. I, I, it's not usually the head piece for me, uh, but certain days, that's the one they want. Uh, I would say out of all pieces, it's that fluttering It's that fluttering filet piece that's about that big that's dancing by it's just almost irresistible it'll outfish pretty much every other cut of bait five to one most days uh, it's just i put it all on because certain day they want that whole body piece certain day they want to crush that head yeah so and, and chris just like when i'm fishing with american eel the majority, don't ask me why, the majority of our bites come off the head pieces with American Eel. And it's it's just, I guess, the way we might be positioning them on the hook. But, you know, we, we use American Eel, and we're, we're using that size. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when you're using that head piece, that thing's just constantly sitting there and doing that i think you know when when us when the lake bite turns off for us guys uh that's when the river bite fires up and you see just tons of good fish being caught out of the river and and that right there explains why yeah fish go up into the river to spawn they're they're moving up into the secondary tributaries that are going into the river those little shallow creek uh inlets that are going into the river they go up in there they spawn and then after they're done, they go back into the river and, and sit in those deeper holes. Uh, when I say deeper holes, it may only be 12 feet deep, uh, you know, maybe 20 feet deep in some of these shallow rivers, but that's where they're at. And I got buddies that go up into these rivers in the summer and freaking yeah. hammer them. Uh, they're using airboats and, uh, you know, mud motor boats to get up in there because it's you got to go through sections that are a foot deep to, get to those holes. But yeah. And it pretty much traps those big fish up in there. And then when you get a big rain in the, in the fall, they ride that thing back down into the lake. So uh, I know myself, we definitely start to do a lot more river fishing in the summertime for the flatheads and stuff like that than we do going to the uh, lakes. So we definitely 
we're in the river 95 percent more in the summertime yeah i always tell guys okay uh you know no one's catching big, i'm out there every week okay we're not catching big fish it's fall it's early fall we've got a cold front blowing in with the cool rain that's you know we may have a 50 degree night and that 50 degree rain storm hits yeah. i'll yeah. tell my buddies Tomorrow is big fish day. It's the start of the season. I guarantee you, we haven't been catching fish. I mean, we'll catch a big one occasionally in the summer when you're up by the mouth. But uh, when that rain hits, it's freaking go time. You oh, yeah. Right up in that dirty water coming in that's cold, and the fish, they ride that. They are there like freaking clockwork. Uh So bending tips, going to Lake Tuck, takes some of the next couple of months to take his kayak to go up the Red River. Go up the Red River, man. It's uh, it. They're not going to be close to the mouth. They're going to move up into that thing. So you may have to travel to get to those holes. But I got buddies that get up in their in their airboats and hammer them up in those deeper holes. I don't, I don't what you call it, but on the eel, the best bait piece I've noticed from it, say it was its knee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's up, Chaos? Welcome in, bro. Tip, ben and Tip says he's got a 55-pound thrust trolling motor that will last two to three days. Nice. Well, you're going to need it to get up in there. It gets shallow in the summer on that freaking thing. So you may have to get out and drag that freaking kayak. Chris, what's your beta choice on Texoma this time of year? Shit, I'm using striper, sand bass, hybrids. You know, you can lose you can use any bait that's leak that's legally caught up there. So if you you catch a, a largemouth bass, you can use it. Uh you know, anything that's caught legally, you can use for bait. So I say that's a striper lake. Uh, if you can get striper, that's a great bait. Uh, sand bass, uh, you know, hybrids. Those are my favorite baits on Texoma. It makes a huge difference. Guys, let us know if you if you uh, got any questions, please uh, let us know. Put it up in chat. We'll answer them as quick as we can. We got Matt Mosley. I'm gonna put Matt on soon. I I need him to go catch a giant fish so I can brag about him. So. <laughs> That that man, he's been he's been tearing them up man i know but man i've been up there too and it's like you know i'm i we've caught a bunch of 50s up there this year and you know we had jesse on the boat and he got a 65 but man i'm i, I know i'm spoiled but i man i want one that's supersized and i'm hey, long overdue for one so hey uh matt there's your answer right there brother that's the version two that's coming out this weekend. So that's what that's what that's what we're gonna need to uh throw out there right there. He knows all about that. Jody says she got her a 63 in the muddy water. Yeah. Coming into the river a couple of Saturdays ago. I saw that. Looks like you won something too off of that one, Jody. Pretty awesome. Awesome fish. Yep, she's got some drifting weights heading her way. Yeah, those 63s just look different. Those yep. 60s just look different. Big what uh Rich wants to know what are what are we going to use on the Cooper River? Well <laughs> that's a secret. I, he can't uh, uh, so rich. <laughs> <laughs> anything that swims. How about that? Uh no. Uh we're gonna have a couple of different baits up there, man. Um we're gonna try some different stuff and see how it works pre-fishing for the tournament <laughs> jamie's got to keep that hush hush because <laughs> minds want to know 
and he's got. I, to play. He's I appreciate. To I appreciate. I appreciate that too, Rich. That's a good one, buddy. <laughs> Corey, you ever jump on a plane? You're welcome to jump on the war machine anytime, buddy. I got an Operation Vets with Nets trip this weekend. I'm gonna have a whole family on the boat. Uh, it's gonna be a father, two daughters, and a wife, and Action Jackson. It's gonna get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I expect it to be a big fish weekend. I'm due. So hopefully we can nail one in the 70s. It's that time of year, so. I tell you what, uh, I see that. Um, it will be legal bait. I will have legal bait. I am going to use shrimp and chicken. <laughs> shrimp and chicken and cow liver. <laughs> I might have to try, I might have to throw some of that uh, jelly chicken out there. So Richard, it's got to be caught with a hook. It's got to be caught legally. So uh, you know, if there's if there's a size limit, like for a crappie, it's got to be a legal crappie. If it you know if it's a sand bass, it's got to be over I don't know whatever the you know the size is a t twelve inches, ten inches. Hell, I don't know. Uh, you know, striper. I don't know that there is a size limit on striper. So, the slime liquor. This goes. I gotta have a big full boat. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to bring the dog. I need that dog. He's part of the whole program. But hey, I tell you, that's your good luck piece. That one in Jackson, right there, brother. Yeah, Jackson's always good for a couple of big fish, so. The slime liquor, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Every video you see, man, that, that dog right there is like, yep. Yeah, problem is, Mark, the war machine's part of the luck. Boat's built on luck, so. I'd hate to, I wouldn't really want to use anybody else's boat. I wouldn't even know how to fish if it wasn't on mine. I'd F something up for sure if I was out of my comfort zone. That's just how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's a fish licker. That dog can lick some catfish, boy. I he hit all five of our fish. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be 10 inches above. I mean, you know, Richard, people speed, people pee in the lake. It's the same thing, so it, it's all relative to what, you know. I'm not going to tell you to go break the law, but, you know, guys speed. There's a million of those freaking fish in the lake. It ain't There ain't a shortage of them, I can promise you. There's more of those fish in the lake than a damn giant gizzard shad, so I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, that dog, uh, he looks at you like, what are you guys doing? Can y'all freaking go catch a fish? He does. He, he When you're having a bad day fishing, he's like, you guys suck. <laughs> Chris, do you fish, uh, I see, uh, do you fish Texas and Oklahoma side? Yeah, so if you fish both sides, you got to have a, te a, a stamp, a Texoma stamp. It's 15 bucks. Um, if you got a Texas license, you cannot cross the Red River line. You got to stay on the Texas side. So, uh, you know, I've been up there 25 years. I've never been stopped, asked, uh, any of that. 
about anything. Uh, you know, I'm a steward of the environment. I don't believe, you know, I believe the way that I'm doing it is the right way. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do it my way. So I don't over harvest bait. I don't use more than I need. Uh, I've been uh, known. I've been known to speed. Do you have any recommendations for Ray Roberts at this time of year? Go shallow in the timber around the creek mouse, just outside the flow in the muddy water. You'll hammer them. I'd stay on the west arm. Uh, you know, the the big creek that's by the bridge. That's a good spot. Or all the way on the north end, up in the timber. It's, it's, uh, that's a great lake. It's not, not a whole lot of supersized fish, but I had a buddy that's like, man, there ain't no big fish in Ray Roberts. And I'm like, man, yeah, there is. There's big fish in there. He's like, no, not, not any big fish. I went fished it. First time I fished it for big fish. I got within three pounds of the lake record. I'm like, there's big fish in here. You just don't know. You just got to fish them. You're not where the big fish are. So I caught my first trip there. I got a 53, a, a 48, and a 40. So I believe that's a sleeper lake. I think, I, you know, if I spent some time up there, I bet I could get that record. I'd be in the shallow water, in the timber, right around the creeks, just outside the flow. You'll hammer them. This time of year, that lake is, I mean, it's on fire up shallow right now. My buddies are smoking them up there. Definitely uh, shallow Lots water. Of 30s in that lake. Yep. Tons of 20s and 30s. Yep. Definitely fish the shallow waters right now, guys. Definitely start hitting them up. Because I can promise you, if you're getting rain, Find you some of that flow coming out the swamps. Find you some of that, you know, where that dirty water is. Fish it. You will catch them. Water still, Walter still hasn't wiped the grin off his face for catching a bigger fish than me. <laughs> yep, that was a great day. I'm glad we got Walter's 40. That was awesome, man. I don't think I've ever been around another fisherman that had as much joy catching those big fish as, as Walter. I've got a question for chat. Let us know when are your fish starting to head up to get on the beds? What What's your water temperatures? Yeah. Because like, I, cause like ours, I said, ours, ours is going to start towards the probably May, somewhere up in that time. Yeah, I'd say we've had a kind of a cool spring so far. We got we it started to get warm in February and then it cooled off yep. in March. Kind of made the fish go, what the heck is going on? Kept them kind of spread out. Um, yeah. We well, were in the water last weekend, so I can't really speak to what I saw because I was on the river trying to catch a gator gar, which there was so much flow when I got there. I'm like, we ain't catching nothing. <laughs> this flow, we might as well be, we might as well not even put a line in. I was right. We didn't catch the damn fish. Chris, when when will those uh, start up pretty heavy for y'all? Now they should be starting now, but we got it. We've had some really big rainstorms, which. When there's that much flow, those gar are hard to catch. They need it needs to be a down, you know, a little bit of flow. Uh, I, guys are catching them. I haven't seen any giants being caught yet, but smaller ones. I've seen some five footers. So basically, if you got heavy flow, you're wasting your time. But if you've got a steady, I think medium flow, flow to low flow is ideal for them. Nice. That's when I've seen them really rolling and doing their thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. I hadn't been on Lewis.
Louisville. I've just been, man, it's been a weird year for fishing again. Every year is weird. It seemed like the past two or three years, but weatherman can't get it right. Every weekend we've had north front, west front. I mean, I'm talking for months. Every weekend I'm fishing a north front hitting or a west front hitting. Uh, and we've managed to do well every trip, but without consistent weather, you can't really f just hammer them. So, you know, we've, we've managed to catch a couple big fish every trip, but you not any of those trips where it's just like every rod, the rods are just going down. They're, they're grabbing it and running. Uh, it's every trip it's we're battling to just get the fish hooked up. We're losing three times as many as fish as we catch because it's a west wind day and they're just biting this clamping down as it's going by and they don't get the whole bait in their mouth. They just pinch on it a little bit or it's just I've never I haven't had this many trips in one season that have had that weird bite. It's yeah. been every freaking week. Uh, and on, you know, our, on our best days, we may catch five good fish, you know, but, you know, when you're on a really good day, I, I expect to get like 15 good fish, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's you just, know, this year's been different for a lot of people that I've been hearing. I wish I would have been on the water a lot more. Uh, we haven't been on there as much as I'd like to this year, but we're we're going to try to get that taken care of. But, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people talk how different this year has been than average, you know, from other years in the past. I mean, we've had some real cold fronts, then it warms up, then it yeah. shoots back. It's been – I think guys that are able to fish in the middle of the week have done better. But mm -hmm. us weekend guys, when you got a front – I mean, you're – you're you're relegated to fish Saturday or Sunday, so you can pick which day. And and this year has even screwed me because I got kids sports, so I had to fish Sundays or you know or yeah Sundays. I fished Sundays this winter because Saturdays Jackson had basketball games. So, uh, and a front hit every freaking weekend, and then I'd see my buddies out fishing the warm up in the middle of the week and hammering them, and then. The weekend comes and a front hits again. It's like uh, we've done well to get the fish we've got. I feel, you know, blessed that we did catch big fish every trip this season. But uh, it's just different, man. Uh, yeah, tough, really tough. I, I think ten years ago I'd have got skunked probably ten times this year. You know, uh, but thank God I've learned how to eliminate a lot of that crap. You you know, Chris, I, I said in the past, I like fishing high water, but it gets to a certain point that I, you know, I'll be glad to see our river start coming back down to bring the fish out in swamps a little bit so we can actually start, you know, catching more fish right now. We've had high water here, and we're supposed to get a lot of rain tonight and tomorrow, which is going to keep them in the swamps even more. But, you know, our rivers has been a lot higher this year. Yeah. A lot of the past. Now, don't get me wrong. We, we haven't been, you know, flooding crazy. But we have had, just like last week, we put in, the water was level with the boat landing. The ramp, Rebecca had to literally crawl up the ramp to get on the dock. Yeah. So, you know, right now we're still fishing that high water. And a lot of our fish is still stuck in the swamps. And it's been tough. Yeah. You know, there is a such thing as too much flow and too much water coming into the lake and too much food at one time for them to feed on and they're full. And But I don't believe that's been my issue. My, my issue has been I'm fishing on the damn day that west wind's blowing in or or the north front's hitting that day, uh, just kicking my ass on the weather, you know, fishing huge wind or no wind. 
I uh, can't really get on a day where it's been south wind for three days and I get to freaking go fish uh, two days after the rain hits with the south wind. I mean, just nothing's really lined up for us on the weekends to really just go hammer them where we're out there getting 30 fish, you know, 30 good fish. And, you know, 10 of them are big and one of them's a supersized fish. It's just, uh, our, we've got some really good fish, but it's just not been like what I'm used to. Uh, and, and our waters, like I said, with the docks has been underwater so much that dock, you know, I will say, I see Rebecca in chat, almost whipped her ass. It was so slimy and slippery as she was trying to go up, coming right back down. Uh, they've had so much water on them that, you know, it's just got that slime build up on them now and stuff. Yeah. So it, it's crazy, man. I wish we can get rid of some of this water now. Yeah, I'm just, I just want a day where uh, there's no question. The freaking yeah. fish just, ha I'm catching every fish that, smokes a bait and they grab it and just take off and run and uh and but you know even on these weird bite days i've hooked into some absolute freaking giants i think i hooked two trips ago i hooked into one of the biggest fish i've ever hooked into and you know uh i have my drag set really tight when i'm pulling planer boards just so i can get a good hook set uh, I couldn't get the damn rod out of the rod holder, and it was just stripping drag. And I keep my drag tight. It was just stripping drag, uh, and a fifty won't. I mean, I a fifty won't even do that. And this thing was just going, and I couldn't get it out of the rod holder. When I got it out of the rod holder, I felt like a pop, and I'm like, okay, I think it might have buried into the stinger hook, and then it was gone. And I'm like, ah, heartbreaker. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Also, I've been watching a lot of tournaments, but, and the, I've been watching a lot of tournaments, and a lot of people, average size fish have been in the twenties. Just like the, I saw the tournament from uh, Watts Bar in Tennessee this past weekend. A lot of average fish in that twenty to thirty pound range, and yeah. very few up, you know, with three fish getting up into the seventies and eighties with three fish. So yeah, it's been spread out, you know. Uh, yep. I, you know, I see guys doing well that aren't even really haven't been doing it that long. Where you know, uh, you know, you you just put in a long drift and you catch a fish. Whereas I feel like on a good year, if you know how to find the fish, you can go hone in on the, a really good spot, mm -hmm. and. Uh, skill is going to what is what's catching the fish but now right now it's re they're really spread out it's kind of like last uh fall uh to not this past fall but the fall before everything was spread out a lot of guys that aren't you know maybe aren't hadn't been doing it that long we're having great great years you know catching steadily catching good fish uh, and i think Sometimes when it's like that, it's just you just go, you know, and hope you run across one. It's not like you're going and finding, okay, there's giant fish in this area. Now I'm just going to target this area and hammer them. Um, it's more like, all right, I'm in 200 acres. I'm just going to pull through this area because I'm marking a few fish here and there. And hopefully there's a big one in here. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, it's been one of, the, one of those kind of years. That's it. So, guys, if y'all have any more questions in chat, feel free to ask us, guys. Appreciate that, buddy. Man, we're loving doing this. Uh, like getting all the feedback from guys that are enjoying it, saying that it's helping. Uh, that's really why we're out here trying to do it, trying to help guys, trying to help our guys too. Uh, get some recognition and and help promote them. So that's it. Just trying to give give out all the information we can, man, to just make it a heck of a fun experience for everybody going out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, but we definitely try to do our part, man, to share the information. Yep, yep. Uh, I know a lot of guys that have been following the show they're saying man i'm using this stuff and it's working and i'm like 
Yes. I love hearing I saw, that. I saw a comment a while ago, Chris, uh, where I get, you know, when you're talking about the, um, the cast nets look like it picked up their, uh, their game over a hundred percent. Uh, when you were talking about the different styles and different types of cast nets out there. Yeah. Uh, saw one of the comments out there a while ago and man, I love seeing stuff like that. Justin says, funny how that will stay in your memory longer than the great days of catching solid fish. Uh, the great days I always remember, but you know, the longer you do it, the higher your your uh, your you re- keep raising the bar. I'm used to it. Would my, my you know if I could just get one good one, uh, I was happy, and I would say I'd still I'm happy if I get one good one on a really bad day. Uh, but I just. I grind a lot harder than I used to, so so I think that pays off. Um, and I fish my ass off to, to catch big fish. Uh, guys that come on the boat, they're like, "Man, I've never seen somebody work as hard as you." I I would I don't I wouldn't even want to. I mean, I don't even don't even want to attempt this because you're just working your ass off to catch these fish, and it is a lot of work the way it, that I fish, but the payoff is huge and uh you know on a bad day is a lot of guys are like man on your worst day is most guys their best day so uh that's it i'm just gonna keep trying to get better i still got a long ways to go you know i'm still improving every trip i'm trying to get better so i see a question here chris what are your hot times to be on the water fishing pre-spawn oh man this time of year it could be any time yeah uh, all day long I, I i don't know that there is a real time of day this time of year uh that they fire up uh you might catch one first thing in the morning and then you might not get another big one till 10 and then you know it might be two o'clock for you that where you nail that giant uh and then the next week it might be all flip-flopped where you get your giant early in the morning. Uh, you know, I, I feel like the weather that just happened is the most important thing right now. When's the last time it rained? Uh, you know, what weather pattern just blew through? Uh, you know, those are the things that are going to really dictate how well you're going to do, how well the fish are going to be concentrated. Right now they're spread out. If you don't have rain, they spread out all over the shorelines. You need a rain event to to congregate them up into that muddy water. Uh, And they don't all go there, but a lot of them will go right into that muddy water. It's just a congregation area. It's a place where you can throw everything else out the window. If it just rained, get up in that freaking muddy water. Uh, there's going to be fish up there. Now, they don't always bite. Uh, I fished up there, was it two weeks ago with Bill? The freaking shallow water was loaded with big fish. We only caught two good fish that day. We caught a 40 and a 35. Bill got a f- one that was probably high 40. Uh, in his yak, uh, we hooked into a, a super size fish. We lost it. Uh, that's fishing, but the fish were there. They weren't biting. West wind day. You just never know, man. You never that, know when you when you go. That uh, dirty water washing out some of the fresh bait right now, man. If you can find some of that, hit it up for sure. Yep, yeah, the dirty water is oxygenated more. It's got a ton of crap in it that fish scavenge on. Smaller fish come in there to feed. You've also got fish migrating up through those areas. Anytime there's flow coming in, they make their spawning run. So crappie, they're moving up into the creeks to spawn. Sand bass, when they get a big rain, they're in a staging area outside the mouth. When it rains, they all run. So big fish know that. They go up in there and they kind of, weight and uh it's just a bottleneck um it's not the only way to catch them but it is a good way to catch some of your best fish this time of year it's definitely a place to start 
Let's just say that. Go there, find you a good place like that, and start in that area first. My boy Vess says, shout out to Carolina Lakeweights. Did some dragging in Kansas on Milford. I heard that's a stumpy-ass lake from what Kevin Parks told me. And uh, he said a couple of weeks ago and slayed him. I saw your post. He slayed him. <laughs> <laughs> Made the Texas to Kansas drive worth it. So Appreciate you, my friend. We really do. Yes, he's a local guide here. He's been a long – he's – Long time uh, in the Texas catfishing scene. He guides under, I think, uh, extreme trophy fishing. Uh, Milton Klaus, he's uh, one of our Carolina Lakeweights guys. Vess is, uh, uh, there's no famous cat fisherman, but as, for, as far as Texas, Vess is one of the guys, man. He's been doing it forever. Uh, always catching good fish. Good dude. Owns some lake records. Uh, Heck yeah, man. Makes us smile, that's for sure. No one yeah. does. He'd be a good team member to get on. So, Welcome in, Dink Overstink. How's it going, buddy? I can hear that rain starting up outside now, boy. It's starting to come down now. <laughs> Tommy, I'll be out there, buddy. I want to probably head to the – my game plan this time of year is pretty is pretty set in stone. Uh, you know, I we had rain last weekend. If I was up there, I'd be right around the mouth right now. Uh, but as that water flushes into the lake, they could be anywhere. Uh, they don't just stay up there. They start migrating. They either move up into the river or it kind of got cold. I'm thinking they migrated back out. Um, I'm going to start – looking up at the mouth and then I'm going to work my way back deep. So I expect to find them and I expect to do well. Uh, you know, that doesn't always work out, but that's my expectation. I got high expectations right now. Uh, some of my best fish have come out of this time of year right here. So uh, it looks to be South wind warm up, uh, only thing working against us is we haven't had a, a rain near enough to Saturday when we go to really be concentrated. But I think long drag up there in the inlet, somewhere in the four to 20 foot range, probably sh should produce a giant. And that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, Charles says, you guys have good homework. <laughs> <laughs> get your notepad and your pencil get your pencil sharpened that's for sure uh jeff one thing about me is i don't navigate through jug lines i drag through jug lines and anybody that thinks that they're gonna take the that they own that real estate because they're a jugger they don't know what kind of angler I am. I will drag straight through a jug line and then whatever I snag, I'm cutting it. And uh, sorry, man, you don't own this real estate. It's for everybody. So I don't put up with guys thinking they can string jugs all the way across the inlet. I'm dragging through your line without any hesitation. That's one thing I can't stand, man. People leaving them lines out and just cutting their hooks off and just leaving them out and getting oh man i'm like you brother i put up a post on facebook that said this guy right here is tired of seeing jugs trashing out all of our fisheries that's it and my some of my buddies were like yeah i pulled two jugs out this weekend <laughs> And Sooner I'm or later, you either. would hope they would learn, wouldn't you? You would hope they would learn, but they I hope never they learn. outlaw those damn things. I hope they outlaw those things. <laughs> Jeff. Garbage. Garbage. Jeff, Jeff said, "I knew I would hit. I would. I would strike a nerve." <laughs> Jeff's been with me, like oh, so. If I see a jug string of jugs, I I will take the boat on. I will go full freaking speed five feet from that whole line and just 
flow through there because I know that big motor spooks fish. It gets them the hell out of there. So I'm like, I'm going to blow this dude's line out. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> Man. Yeah, a lot of people trot lined, uh, you know, and jugged when they first started. But, yeah. you know, I get that. Uh, but I just, for me, over time, I see the juggers are the ones that are taking the big fish. They're the ones where their trash is left floating in all of our coves with moss growing on the damn jug that's been there for three years. Yeah. I don't understand why it's illegal for trash to blow out of your truck, but it's legal for you to leave a string of drug uh, jugs where they can swim off and trash out the lake. Yeah. To me, that's littering. You can't just leave your trash laying there and come and say, I'm going to come get it later. But you can leave your jugs laying out there and say, I'm going to come get them tomorrow. It doesn't make any sense because they just swim off. Yeah. And people end up losing them, man. They don't know where in the crap they are. I, I for a second I'm on here. I thought for a second I thought you said a 61 pounder in 60 feet. I'm like 61. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing against juggers if they'll watch their equipment. My issue is when they allow their stuff to swim off. Yeah. And uh trash out all of our likes it just it's i can't stand it and, and it's the same thing with uh people bush hooking you know if you're gonna bush hook do it the legal times take your stuff up don't leave it in the trees yeah just yeah just, half of those guys just leave it yeah it, it's yeah. it's sickening during the day when you driving along you're looking over there and you got unmarked tree limbs just sitting there going up and down fish on them it is sickening if you're gonna do it do it legal i think change is coming there's enough of us guys that are that have a you know more conservation minded towards these catfish and we spend way more money than a jugger does on fishing we spend way more money on electronics our boats our rigs our gear and, and I hate to say it, but money is what's going to drive this yep. thing. So the more yep. more guys that are doing it the right way, spending all this money, and uh, that's what's going to make the change happen more. More. That's what happened with the bass, and uh, you know, it just it, it takes it's uh, really slow and takes a long time for it to happen. But uh, can't wait to see it. That's for sure. Dink over stink says, my buddy of mine drug me through a bunch of jug lines in the tube, and luckily I didn't get hooked. <laughs> and that's true, man. If you're out there having a good time and, you know, you've got youngers in your tube and, and you fall and hit a trout line or a jug, I mean, that's going to send them to the hospital with a hook in their leg and stuff, yeah. man. Yeah. That's Plus, dangerous. You hit that. You hit that trot line with your motor and you wrap it up into your prop shaft and then you blow out the seals in your lower unit. And yeah, I mean, and somebody said, yeah, guys get drunk and just leave that stuff out there. And then they're like too hung over on Sunday and they're like, ah, F it. Let's just that's go home. And they just leave it in the lake. That's it. That's it. And that's the thing, man. Cause I can tell you, it's coming. The trash is coming out the trees if I see it. Yeah, Justin, I, I pulled a jug out two weeks ago that had two fish on it. My buddy's like, man, uh, there's no, there's, he's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to release, I'm, I'm going to check, I'm going to run this jug. There ain't another jug around. Nobody just puts one jug down. This got a fish on. It's done yeah. swum off. We pulled it. The tag was a week old, had two fish on the jug. I'm like, this right here is why jugs ought to be attended. It shouldn't be legal to leave them unattended. And so, I mean, I don't know if those fish would have worked their way off of that. Uh, 
off of those hooks. They, you know, I'm not going to say that they wouldn't have because I've caught a ton of fish that had a hole that they'd ripped the whole, they had rot on their mouth and because they'd ripped a hook out. And I got to think it had to have been a jug. Yeah. I, I myself, I tell people, put yourself in a fish situation. Think what they feel right now. You know, they've been hung up to a jug or a trout line for a week or two. I mean, how would you feel? I've pulled them off jugs that have been there for over a month. Yeah. Just the fish just lay. And I'm like, man, I don't know. And they were up in a cove. I'm like, how did this fish just not get eaten by turtles? Yeah. You know, so I don't know how often it, they're like, and some guy said, how often do you see a dead fish on there? I'm like, you're not going to see them dead on there. The dead fish gets eaten off. I mean, they ain't going to be dead on that thing for very long. Other yeah. fish going to pick that thing clean. Yeah. So, uh, but I do see them. All those ones that are up in the coves, guys aren't setting those jugs, jug lines up in the cove. They're setting them out on the ledges and out on the points and then, they get a good fish and the fish goes up in the cove to break that damn line off. Cause he's like, what is this thing on me? Yeah. So, and that's true, Justin. Um, you know, they, they've cut your, uh, in some areas you're loud, but so many rods. And I guess, I don't know exactly what area. And then you might be, you know, say being able to use only six rods, but yet they can have as many jugs as they want. You know, that myself is. Should well, be here's the rule. You can have a hundred hooks in the water. Yeah. Uh, so that could be 50 jugs with two hooks on each jug. That could be a hundred jugs. You could have a hundred, hundred fishing poles out if you could manage it because they don't differentiate between uh, a, a guy who's running jugs or a guy who's fishing with a rod and reel. So uh, I, I know some states fish, don't they have where you can only use like three poles? Yeah. Or only oh, yeah. six poles. But oh yeah. Um and uh I think that's what was just was like they might be able to have, you know, yeah. like you said, a hundred hooks. You know, yeah. that that myself is definitely wrong. I agree. I just don't like them getting lost all over our lakes and trashing everything up. So Yeah. That's us here on uh you can have like the bush hooks. I think you're allowed. Uh, I'm trying to remember what they were. I think 50 or something like that. Uh, but on trout lines, you're allowed up to, I guess, depending on the size of uh, your trout line, 50 to 100 hooks. So, Bill, two weeks ago, when we saw, uh, okay, we're dragging the inlet up at Texoma, the mouth of the red. And we're up there in probably about eight feet of water, seven feet of water. And, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, I think we're hung, right? So we're hung on something. Uh, I'm like, my buddy's like, eh, these Carolina Lake weights, man, they've been coming through everything. I'm like, well, I think we just hung into a tree. We're probably going to lose this one. And so I crank down on it and it come through the snag. And when it come up to the surface way out there, I'm like, oh, it looks like we broke the, the tip of the tree off. Yeah. Well, we got it up by the boat. It was a rod and reel combo. And there, my buddy, my, the, my guest on the boat, Operation Bets with Nets guest was like, that's a rod and reel combo. <laughs> so I reel the thing in. I'm like, holy crap. He's like, how long do you think that's been in the water? I said, not more than a couple of days. And uh, their eyes were wrapped around the rod, around the rod, which is a, it's a custom rod wrap, yeah. called an acid wrap. It's done for saltwater guys that are fighting a fish directly under the boat. Oh. So the rod, the rod tip, the bottom eyes down so you can fight a fish. I'm like, I only know one cat fisherman uh, that's got that type of rod. Let me call him, see what this rod's worth. I call him my buddy, Bill. He's like, man, I just took a spill. And uh, I'm up here at Lake Texoma. I'm like, he's like, I lost one of my custom rods. I'm like, I just caught a custom rod. And so he's like, yeah, it's a whatever, whatever with a foil sticker on it. And I'm like, I got it. It's right here. And so he, he was hung on a jug that had gone into a snag because catfish will go into something to try to get that. Yeah. Thing off. Well, Bill's in his kayak. He got hung up on that thing, spilled him over, lost two rods, almost killed the guy. So, uh, 
you know, luckily he got righted. He lost his two rods when we snagged that rod and I was able to give him that rod back. So, uh, you know, sooner or later, I think it'll come to a head. I know we can do a full two shows on it. Probably. I can promise you that, but you know, sooner or later, I think something will change. Like you said earlier, Chris, it, it's got to, there's a lot more boat traffic now than there ever has been before. You've got a lot more people on jet skis, a lot more people out doing water, you know, water sports and stuff. Yep. I think somebody important gets hurt. <laughs> Things will change. Yeah. You know? Sooner or later, something's got to happen. I mean, you don't want nothing bad to happen to nobody, you know, for that to happen. But, you know, you've got so much more traffic now, man. I mean, it can get expensive wrapping stuff up in your props and stuff, too. Bill said effing jugs. <laughs> yeah, I believe that could be an interesting show if you get into some of these topics. <laughs> yeah, luckily, I don't know any of my, I mean, no one that I know currently uses them. Uh, probably wouldn't get along with them too good. Yeah. You know, most of the guys I know are, are, are real anglers. Uh, I don't, I mean, Guys that jug are not real cat fishermen. They're out fishing for something else, you know. Uh, Back to the oh, spawn topic. <laughs> I think we pretty much covered the spawn topic. We just got off onto the jugs. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. That's pretty much how our shows go. Yet yeah, return yeah. that rod was probably one of the highlights of my fishing season. That was crazy cool. I don't know what the odds are of that, but it was insane. You know, guys, the summer, you know, I been, with the weather getting ready to hit up in the 80s next week for us here in South Carolina, I believe the spawn's going to start cranking up here real soon. Probably the first of May, the middle of May, somewhere up in that area. Uh, like I said, with the amount of water that we've had, the rain that we've got coming tonight, tomorrow, and I think we got a little bit next week, you know, I believe it's going to be the first to the middle of May for our area for that spawn to really start kicking in. Yeah, I uh, I think it's about time. Uh, guys are like, well, what do you fish for pre fish pre-spawn? Get close to their spawning habitat, which is going to be inlets of creeks, inlets of the river. Uh, if you're up around shallow stump fields uh you know stumps that are in in five to ten foot of water they like those stumps they'll spawn up in those stumps so yeah. if you can't really fish the stumps fish right next to them uh fish the mouths of those inlets uh you know and when i say the mouth it might be a quarter of a mile off of the actual inlet i mean uh they don't all just stay right up there ne next to it. They they're out kind of in holding areas and they're spread out. They're not all just crammed in like it's a winter bite either. Uh, yeah, because uh, lots of duck grass. Right now, I think the shell crackers are already bedding up, uh, going on the beds right now already. So lots of duck grass. They're they're just ca catching a lot of those fish right now. So, you know, the catfish is right up behind them. Yeah, you can fish any of these spawning areas for fit for big fish. Yeah. yeah. Crappie, crappie beds, bass beds. Usually sunfish spawn right after the crappie and the bass are done, so. Yeah. I, you know, seem like bass and right now it's the sand bass run here. And then I think right, right about now the crappie start going and the bass pretty much go at the same time as the crappie. And, uh, and then catfish follow, uh, 75 degree water usually kicks them off. Jeff says, what about noodling during the spawn? He's just trying to start shit. <laughs> so 
somebody caught a 98 pound flathead last year during the shed during the uh during the flathead spawn on Lake Tawakini. Wow. 98 pound flathead. Wow. Come out a 14 foot deep hole. Jeez. Man, I tell you, it's been another excellent show, Chris. Man, this has been a lot of fun, brother. I had a good time. Y'all make sure y'all give us a thumbs up. We're gonna yeah. uh next week we got to uh, we got uh, Stacy Gaston uh, and Peter Drees with SmackDown Catfishing Rod Holders, and that will be on the sponsors. That will be on Monday night too, guys. Yeah, that's going to be Monday yeah. night. Uh, we're not going to do Wednesday. Jamie's going to be on the road, and those guys do. Uh, Stacy does a, a church sermon online on Wednesday nights, so. Yeah. Uh, yep, and we're going to be pre-fishing for a tournament, so we're going to be trying to see where we can go. All right. Hopefully, y'all do well on your tournament. I'm, I'm hoping, brother. <laughs> we need it. It's been it's been a while. We got to knock the dust off some stuff, so we ready to get back at it. Yeah, I'm due for one over 70, so I'm hoping it's this weekend. And uh, Yeah, like Rebecca said, that will be a great show Monday night, guys. So definitely check it out. Matt said he just caught a good one in 62 feet. It can't be that good or he would have said something. <laughs> <laughs> He's messing with you over there, Chris. He just, yeah, yeah, playing with my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> always got a co-angler with me when dragging I only got four chances actually trying to catch fish maybe i'm hard on juggers they should only be allowed what i'm allowed as far as hooks in water that's it well that's it. justin you're fishing texoma you can have as many rods really up to 100 hooks it's I usually fish with 10 rods, sometimes 12. If I'm anchoring, I'll fish with more even. So, You know, um, the lake flathead fishermen and the river flathead fishermen actually have a lot in common. You know, we always look for the structure to yeah. fish regardless. Uh, there's going to be a lot of areas in the lake. It's harder to find flatheads in a lake because you got to look for certain structures towards the area, you know, in that lake. And when you have a bigger lake, it's a little bit tougher. But definitely that would, you know, that would definitely be a good show for sure. We had Epic Catfish on and he had the world record flathead come out of a lake. We talked about it pretty extensively, Jeff. Yeah. He, uh, he had one right around 100 pounds. It was 20-something years ago he caught that fish. Caught it off a deep ledge. Said it looked like a car on the on his 2D sonar. He thought it was a, a stump sticking off of the ledge and came back the next day, and it had moved over about 20 feet. Chris, I'm going to let you answer this one from Rebecca. And there's a reason why she's probably asking that. Now I'm over here laughing because I know how I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Depends on the time of year. But this time of year, I've got 16 to 18 rods on the boat. Chris, thank you, brother. I don't, I bring, I bring about that 15 to 18 rods every time I go. And <laughs> here, here's the reason why I, I tend, tend this time of year, I tend to anchor and drift. And uh, I used to use kind of a hybrid rig this time of year. I would cut my dragging rigs off and I would put one on that I could anchor and drag with. But I've just found that the way that I like to fish shallow, my, my dragging rigs are not ideal for it. And I need to have 
to be able to put my bait damn near on the bottom when I'm anchoring. And when I'm dragging, I like to have my shit about three feet up off the bottom. So, uh, and I don't, I, I don't like to have a sinker slide when I'm anchoring, and, but I love to have a sinker slide when I'm dragging. Uh, so that's a big reason I, I carry both. And then if I'm, if I do get into a real rocky type area where I'm breaking stuff off, um, I like to have extra rods so that I'm not having tie rigs while I'm on the water. So I will even take my anchoring rigs and take the, the anchor weight off and put a Carolina Lake weight on it. If I'm in a real rocky type bouldery area where you're just, you're losing crap. Uh, you you know, Re Rebecca awesome, said. But this time of year, I tend to go where, you know, on ledges and crap. So. Rebecca says, since we come out with the new river weights, Chris, that, we anchor fish and drag with the same weights now. So she says, why the heck, hell don't you just leave half of them at home? I always come up, well, if I, you know, if I want to change something up, I might have a rod set up different. I'll just go to that rod and pull it off. Yes. So, so, so my, when I'm anchoring shallow in the spring, I might be in a foot of water. Yeah. So I need to be able to keep my baits on the bottom uh, instead plus, of... And plus, it makes us look cooler when we have a bunch of rods on the boat, too. <laughs> I carry more than I need, but some days I use them all. So, I mean, it sure is nice to be able to go from anchoring to, to dragging uh, without switching up and, you know, clipping things on and all that. So... <laughs> Oh, man. See there? Great minds think alike, Chris. I love it, man. Heck yeah. Yeah. My, uh, when I get to the boat, when I get to the courtesy dock, I don't know how many times over the years I've heard guys say, you got enough rods? <laughs> <laughs> you got enough rods? <laughs> I'm like, hey, you I think, used every damn one of them today. You think that's bad? See us on tournament day. I can show you some rods on a boat. We're only allowed 10, but yeah. I can show you a bunch of rods on a boat tournament day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this has been a blast, brother. It really has. And I tell yeah. you, you know, I enjoy seeing everybody in chat, you know, asking us questions and talking about, you know, they've learned a lot. So that makes us, that makes me, I know, feel good for sure, knowing that we're able to get that information out there. Well, I've got an Operation Vets with Nets trip Saturday up at Mighty Lake Texoma. Uh, God, I hope we catch a giant. If y'all don't know, Operation Vets with Nets does no-cost fishing trips for active duty, military, and retired veterans. Uh, if you want to donate your time or you want to be a, a, a captain – Get a hold of operationvetswithnets.org. If you know a vet that's in need of real therapy um, or somebody who needs to get out on the water that's active duty or a retired vet, uh, get a hold of operationvetswithnets.org. Uh, it's an awesome cause. If you want to donate, it's uh, you can donate. There's a link directly on the website when you pull it up. OperationVetsWithNets.org. Uh, it's a 503 nonprofit organization. Uh, everything that gets donated goes directly back into the organization, whether it to be for the wheelchair boat. Uh, there's not any. There's nobody that's uh, get paid. It's all done with uh, charitable donations and people donating their time so lots of great things happening there, there chris really is rich and all of all of coming is a lot of great things happening and that is growing every day too man but yeah guys also go and check us out on youtube carolina lake weights go to give us a thumbs up watch a video and leave us a comment definitely check us out over there don't forget Every day we've been putting up some specials on our Facebook page. Take advantage of it. We're going to be doing a new uh, special tomorrow. 
We're going to be doing another new special after that. So take advantage of all the all the uh, percentage off of all the products and stuff. So definitely check us out. <laughs> James <laughs> Rod Sox on all 64 of the boat and reel covers. <laughs> Well, he's a lot more dedicated than me, man. I destroy my crap. I give it away. I give them away when I don't need them anymore. I got two full sets that I keep active fishing. Uh, I got all these orange ones that have caught freaking 30,000 pounds of tanks. And then I got a fresh set of green ones that are on the boat. So. Chris, I'm going to mention to you, a lot of people might not know. We now carry rod socks. We got the new ones right here. So okay. if, you're, if you're using big, low, uh, big hooks, big whatever you've got, this right here, recover it and keep them safe and not your hooks and your rod socks. These are a lot wider. They're seven sixes, so check them out, guys. We have a lot of these in stock right now. Oh, real men, big, big kitty hats. That's right, brother. Man, I got so many hats. My wife's like, damn, another hat? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, but a lot of people don't know, man. We're the first ones to have these, and we've uh, teamed up with uh, G Socks. So definitely check these out on our website, guys. Yeah, Rebecca says that's 45 minutes of her fishing time. Yeah. <laughs> I I have I have Chris, I have started using covers for my reels. And of course Damn, I've got you are dedicated. Holy crap. The bad part is the new reels I got now, my my uh she she'll be happy. They do not fit my uh cover my reels. So Oh yeah, you must have got some pins. Oh, yeah. Well, Rebecca, you'll be happy to know that when I'm done, I throw mine in the bottom of the boat and drive it home. And I don't pull it back out until the night before I go fishing. And uh, it ain't to clean them. It's to put make sure I got good rigs and clean leaders and all that. So, And when I, when I tie them, I put them back in the bottom of the boat. And when I get to the boat ramp, I stick them up in the rod holders and off we go to fish. Chris, I bring mine in the room with me. I sleep with them every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Another great show, man. I'm enjoying this, y'all. I hope y'all having a good time. Appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, y'all, if you haven't given us a thumbs up yet, give us a thumbs up. Head over to Carolina Lakeweights. Give them a follow on YouTube on TikTok, on Facebook. Uh, we got a bunch of good things coming. Uh, can't really mention some of them yet, but big things coming from Carolina Lightweights. Uh, we got some new stuff we're going to kick off. We got some new guy. We're putting Matt Mosley on the team. We just need him to catch a giant fish. Matt, come on, man. Matt, what you waiting on, brother? They're waiting on you. You know you got to have it, brother. So, appreciate everybody stopping in, spending some time with us. Yeah, uh, sure, man. Guys, like Chris said, we got a lot of great things happening at Carolina Lake Weights. Stay tuned. We, you're definitely not going to want to miss it. So, guys, tight lines. God bless. Azul out. Later, y'all.